Hey there, and welcome back to Mi Casa. My name is Yami, I am your Latina next door, and today we're in my YouTube studio slash tiny home. I am so excited for this space. I'm gonna be sharing a tour of the building, as well as sharing some fun renderings that I made of this space, and I'm gonna be sharing some mood boards with you all to kind of give you all an idea of what I envision for this space. And yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today. So before I go into the details of the actual structure, we actually purchased this from our local Mennonite community in a business called Sloping Ridge Structures, and they did an amazing job and built this in absolute no time. Now we had to prepare the site for the tiny house to come in and be put on our land, and Nelson thought it would be a great idea to give this a shot. We decided to place the tiny home directly behind our little campsite on our property. It was also a good location in comparison to where the house is going to be. It's not too far and not too close so that we don't interfere with any construction that will go on in the future. This location will also help us tie into our septic tank that we had to install for our camper. So that helps us with costs as well. Of course, everything was going perfectly until we hit some soil that was extremely saturated and Nelson got stuck. <laughs> this is where our amazing neighbors stepped in and helped my husband get out. We actually tried with our first neighbor, as you see here, and they tried for a while to get this little machine out of the ground with no luck. We had to actually get the help of a second neighbor who had an even bigger tractor and they were able to pull it out. But these are just some of the things that happen when you are a first time farm owner. And you know what? It was a learning experience. So this is what I meant when I said in my last video that we have some really amazing neighbors. So naturally we called in the professionals and we're very lucky that my husband has gotten to know quite a few guys in the industry. They came in and made it look so easy. And by this time too, our land had dried up a bit from all the rain that we had been having. So it wasn't as big of an issue getting stuck and they were able to do it right away. We also had quite a bit of gravel to be put on the area for drainage and leveling. Now, during this time, we were able to go and visit the place where we had our building built and check it out while it was still in progress. And it was really cool to see how everything was coming along. Of course, nothing can get us as excited as the day when it was finally delivered. Now we had never seen a delivery of this kind before, so it was pretty fascinating to us how they can move an entire building and set it up on site with, you know, just one vehicle and basically just one person putting up blocks and making sure that everything was level and situated properly. At this process, took about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get done and everything went pretty smoothly. We set the building up on blocks. That's pretty much the way that these are set up. It allows for any slightly uneven ground underneath for you to be able to level it. And it also gives you a way to access anything underneath it for plumbing, electrical, any of that stuff. So it is set up and eventually we will cover those blocks up with something. But for now, this is how the building looks. Now this space is 14 feet wide by 40 feet long. It's a good size building. They did an amazing job 
building the exterior shell of this place. It is completely waterproof. And now it's up to us to finish the inside out. Now, my goal for this space is to make it look like an actual cottage. I wanted it to feel like a home. And mainly because I have a vision of how I want my future DIY and creative videos to go. In order to do that, I want a space that is completely finished and beautiful from the start. Now, if you look behind me, we have a kitchen space over there, and this is our bathroom over here. Our house build is gonna take quite some time, and we need this space to actually function temporarily as additional living space for us. It's much needed when you are living a five to one camper. But it's also going to be great for me to have an actual bathroom whenever I'm working here during the day or whenever I need to clean any of my supplies. To the other side of the bathroom, we're going to have a kitchen area. It's going to have a fridge, it's going to have a stove, a sink, and everything that you need. One of the things that I like to do is cook. I love to home make and I haven't really been able to share as many recipes and just time in the kitchen as I would like to. So. My main goal is to have this as a fully functioning kitchen, especially while we are building our home, so I can share recipes with you all as well. Now, as you can see, I already have things on the floor as well as supplies back there. Nelson and I just went this past weekend to purchase electrical supplies so that Nelson can go ahead and wire the entire place. Now, these boards that you see right here, these are gonna be for our ceilings. We specifically requested to have vaulted ceilings in this place so that it could feel larger. And in one of the model homes that they had at the community where we built this, they had these beautiful boards all along a vaulted ceiling and it looked amazing. And that's something that Nelson really wanted to add to this space. So he went ahead and purchased them and he's gonna be installing those in the ceiling once the insulation and all of the electrical and everything has been put in. Now, as you can see here, Nelson and I already put tape down in several areas, marking off some of the things that are gonna be going in here. We need a water heater, a water filtration system, and some storage. So we're gonna be building out a closet in front of this wall right here. And it's gonna be perfect to have our water heater right here because on the other side, we're gonna have the bathroom. And then right on this side of the building, we're gonna have our kitchenette. So it's perfect placement for that. Now to the left here, we already have our bathtub. Nelson and I are gonna be finishing out this bathroom together. We already have some of the stuff coming in. I am really excited for the look of this bathroom. This time we get to start from scratch. We are not remodeling and I hope I get it right. One of the things that I wanted to make sure was that we had enough space in here. So our tub is gonna go in this corner right here. It's gonna go all the way up to the ceiling, which we're really excited. We have a window here to go above the toilet. And then our vanity is gonna be right here with a mirror. And I think that's just perfect layout. It's very spacious in there. And I just can't wait to get started, hopefully. We will have our plumber come in next week and do the plumbing. That's the only thing that Nelson is not gonna do himself. Now to the right of this wall, as you can see, we laid out the footprint of the cabinets. And it's gonna be quite a nice size kitchenette area. That right there is gonna be the fridge and I want my sink to be right in the center, right here between these two windows so I can look out either way. The kitchen stove is going to be right there along with the hood. And I decided not to do any upper cabinets. First of all, because this is a small space and it is not gonna be my permanent kitchen. I'm really excited because I've never done a kitchen or had a kitchen like that. So we're gonna do some really fun storage ideas, maybe even above the windows. I'm excited about that. So we're gonna be buying and installing all these countertops ourselves. So we already have the appliances ordered and they should be in in about another couple weeks or so. We actually ordered those appliances a little while ago, but we pushed out the delivery just to make sure that 
they kind of weren't in our way while we were having the plumbing done. Now, this right here is the front of the building, and we wanted everything to look nice and symmetrical. So you will see here we have two sets of windows here and another two there. There is no power, and it's about, I would say, almost 2 o'clock in the afternoon right now. And as you can see, it is so nice and bright in here. And I did that on purpose. I wanted it to feel nice and bright and get as much natural sunlight in. And I also wanted to make sure that we had a back door to go to the back and also that it would have windows so that we can get sunlight from the back as well. Now, the other end, all the way at the end over there, is the living space area. And my vision for this is to have a fireplace in the middle with bookshelves on either side. And then have on the bottom of each of the bookshelves some storage space. In front of it on the floor, you can see we already marked it off, is kind of where we want to have like a small love seat or couch. And then we'll have two chairs on either side of the fireplace. Now you're probably wondering why I wouldn't try and set it up more as a studio. She's going to have a fireplace, bookshelves, a sofa, living space. Why is she not worrying about storage for her YouTube studio supplies and crafting items and all that stuff? That's a very good question. Now I am designing this place with a lot of storage in mind, but the storage is going to be kind of hidden. And I didn't want it to look like a studio. I didn't want to have a whole bunch of knickknacks behind me. I think that was the one thing that really bothered me of all the spaces that I had previously filmed in. I was always I was always trying to find the right angle so that you wouldn't see clutter. That was really frustrating for me. I hated to have to shift things over to one side to make the area that I was filming somewhat nice. And I really thought I want to pare things down and also not have as many things on hand whenever I'm creating, right? I just want to get rid of absolutely everything that's unnecessary that I haven't used in a long time and only keep those essential tools and products and items that I do use on a regular basis and I know I will be using out here with a purpose. So I will have a lot of storage in the furniture. You know, there's going to be a lot of dual purpose stuff. It'll look very pretty, but it'll have my products and my items that I use on a regular basis hidden inside. That way I have them close by but they're not all out and in the open. So in those bookshelves on either side of the fireplace, I will have different tools and things that I will be using on a regular basis, probably even my sewing machines, because you guys know I love to sew. So when you see the built-ins on either side of the fireplace, they'll look pretty, they're gonna be for filming and staging, but they'll also have smart storage for all of the things I need to create as I usually do. So right here we have the sofa and then again in front of it is a living space. Behind it, I actually want to put like a nice credenza behind it. Again, it'll serve as storage, but it would also serve as a place for me to stage certain items that I create for the channel. So we're going to move from over there and we're going to move to the center of the building. Now this is where I'm going to be filming and actually creating my DIYs. I'll have a table in the center that will most likely serve as a dining room table for us, but then a table that I can use in order to paint or sew, that kind of stuff. And then behind here, I'll also have some small cabinetry. I'm still trying to figure out what I want it to look like, but I do have an idea of just putting some storage freestanding cabinets along here so that I can house even more stuff that I need. So I'll have storage here. I'll have storage in this closet right here. I'll have storage behind the sofa and I'll have storage on either side of the fireplace. And if I need extra storage, I can always put a little piece of furniture, like a small little hutch right here. And I'll even have more storage there. So that is where all of the items that I'll be crafting with will be stored. And the rest of the space will just be a beautiful area for me to stage, talk, do intros, and all of those wonderful things. 
So now I want to do is share all of the mood boards that I created for these individual spaces and the style I'm going for. And I've also created some 3D renderings so you guys can see how everything will flow once everything is set inside. Now, when I created these mood boards, I made sure that I had them all kind of close together in proximity on my computer so that I could make sure that all the spaces coordinated very well with one another. All of my walls are going to be nice and light and bright. I'm not doing any dark colors as far as the walls are concerned, but I am bringing in some warmer textures and some nice neutral colors in the spaces so that whenever I'm creating things throughout the seasons, I can change up the accessories just fine to suit what I am trying to share. So here is kind of what I want to create for the living room. For this space, I want to create a central focus on the back wall with the fireplace and built-ins on either side. I'm going to keep things pretty neutral with both grays and beiges. I hope to anchor the space with a rug and add some armchairs as well as some really nice accessories. Next, let's move on over to the dining slash crafting area so you can see how that is going to look. Moving on to the dining room area, this is where I'll be crafting and DIYing as well as having our evening dinners. I will be including the same colors and of course this is to give you guys a general idea of how I want everything to look together and my color scheme. Whether or not I'll be buying or flipping these items or getting these second hand, we'll just have to wait and see for the opportunity and if budget permits. But this is the general look that I'm going for. This is an overhead view of kind of how the area will be laid out. Now moving on to the kitchen. I was very inspired by the kitchen in the farmhouse where we stayed at Bryson City during this past Christmas season. I shared that tour with you guys. If you haven't seen it, it's so adorable. I will link it below. Now that kitchen had no upper cabinets. They just had shelves in the kitchen and it was nice and bright up top, but they had darker cabinets on the bottom. And I fell in love with it and I thought, I've never had that. I would love to try it in my little studio. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're going with some warmer, darker cabinets on the bottom and we're gonna add a beautiful shelving on the top just so that we can house exactly what we need for this kitchen, nothing more. I wanna keep everything nice and simple and clean and just look really beautiful to the eye. Then for the bathroom, I just want to keep things charming in this bathroom. I want everything to be nice and simple, but I also want it to have that beautiful, calm, soothing cottage feel. A little bit feminine, but neutral enough for everybody to enjoy. Now the inside of the cottage is the most important part. We need to get this inside finished out as quickly as possible. But there are a couple areas outside that we do wish to tackle as well. I will be adding an outdoor eating area for us. If you all recall, we had a pool in our last house and we've removed that pool and we have all of the pool parts here with us. Once our forever home is built, we'll be putting that pool up because it only had two seasons on it. It was brand new and it was quite an investment for us. We weren't leaving that behind. And swimming is something that our kids love to do. We all enjoy it every summer. So we're gonna be putting a smaller temporary pool outside of this cottage so that the kids can spend some time out there. But I'm also gonna be creating an outdoor dining area for us to also enjoy. That way, whenever the kids are outside enjoying the sun and the water, they can sit down, have a break, have some lunch, or we can all have dinner outside right behind our studio as well. And of course, it's also gonna give us more square footage to enjoy having a nice, beautiful outdoor table set for us to have food on as a family. Here is kind of what I envision for that space. Now for the front of the building, I would love nothing more than a porch. And I have a pretty big vision for the kind of porch that I want for my studio. So 
I have it pinned on Pinterest. I will share the image of how I want it to look and hopefully Nelson and I can make it happen. That's obviously probably going to be one of the later projects in this, but I'm excited and looking forward to having an outdoor space in the front that's covered that we can enjoy whenever it's raining out here. So I want this to be like a fully functional little small home. And I am so excited. I cannot wait to use the space and share it with you all. But of course, there's a lot of work to be done. So I'll be bringing you along every single step we go. We're gonna be showing you how we do everything, why we chose the things that we chose. If it goes easy, if it does not, we are on the brink of hitting the ground running. We're only waiting on a few more things that we need before we can start the plumbing behind us for the bathroom and the kitchen area. Then once that's done, we start with the electrical. Once that's done, it's insulation. And then we can start covering these walls. That's when we get to the really fun stuff. Now, I'd love to know what you guys think of the YouTube studio and the floor plan, the colors, all the things that I have put together in order to make this look like a really cohesive area and just a really inspirational space for me to continue working. Also, if you have any suggestions or ideas or anything like that, put them down below and let me see because I might have missed something somewhere. I hope that I can create those mood boards as closely as possible in reality. These images are images that I pulled from the internet to kind of give me an idea of how everything is going to work together. I don't know if I'll end up buying a few new things, DIYing some of them, flipping some of them. I am not sure yet, but all I know is that we're going to get there and we're going to do this together. <laughs> I need you guys to root me on because it seems like so much right now, but and I haven't even mentioned this, but the goal is to have this done by September. So we're going to be working all through May, June, July, August, and in September, that's it. So five months for this to get done. We have a very tight deadline for several different important reasons. The main reason is so that we can get the hardest and the majority part of the work done before we break ground on the house so that again we have the space we have the area for me to work and we're just a little bit more comfortable here on the farm i'd love to know which one of the areas really spoke to you and you're really looking forward to seeing i'd love to know what you think okay i think that's enough for today i hope you guys have gotten an idea of all that's going to be taking place and are looking forward to it. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you back here next week with another video. Until then, adios.